Let me make one thing perfectly clear here. This gentleman over here at the table, on August the 6th, 2017, I can tell you where he was not. He was not at 104 Mill Street. Mr. Lackey has no personal knowledge as to what happened in that house on that day. No personal knowledge whatsoever. Not only does he have no personal knowledge as to what happened in that house on that day, but nothing that he told you in his opening statement is factually complete and accurate. Since the inception of this case on August 6, 2017, Laura Bluestein's words have been taken out of context. Her words have been taken out of context by the police. They were twisted. And that continues to this day. It took us long enough to get here. 12 of you were eventually sent on this case. And 12 of you will retire to that jury room. And 12 of you will make a determination as to whether or not the state, by way of the presentation of the evidence by Mr. Lackey, has convinced each and every one of you beyond a reasonable doubt. It's a very, very heavy burden beyond a reasonable doubt. That's their burden. That's what they have to prove. They have to convince each and every one of you that Laura committed murder on August 6, 2017. And you know what? They won't be able to do that. You know why they won't be able to do that? Because this case against her is riddled with doubt, reasonable doubt, that she murdered Alicia Hawaii, who she loved deeply. And you will hear about that. We, the defense, we have no burden of proof. We do not have to prove our innocence to you. We are presumed innocent under the law, as you know. During jury selection last week, hopefully, all of that is from his memory, and you realize that we can sit there and throughout the entire trial. And the question is solely have they met the burden? Let me tell you a few other things. For example, words taken out of context. Now, what was the impression that you got? Prosecutor as to when the police went to 142. That the police knocked on the door, knocked on the door, and she wasn't coming out, and she wasn't coming out, and she finally came out, and she had blood on her and went upstairs. Okay? The only problem with that it's not going to be the first time that I lose my glasses and paper. I just want to do this. The only problem with that. She opens the door. Okay. She opens the door, and they smell an overwhelming odor of marijuana. Laura has a medical marijuana card. Laura has some medical conditions. Laura gets marijuana, and she smokes it, and she smokes it a lot. And you hear that. And they open the door. You hear that they do notice blood. And her first response is, that's my wife's blood. She's dead. They didn't say that, did they? The officer says she's dead? Yes. And she says, I'm assuming my mom and dad called and explained the situation? That's what she says to them. They said, where's the weapon? And what does she say? It's on the bed. It accidentally went off. It's on the bed. I didn't need to. She started bleeding really bad. I put her on my paint tarp. Nothing else has been touched. That's what she tells the police. Didn't hear that from the prosecutor. 
impression that you have in your mind of the magic. This cold blooded killer kills her wife and then tries to bury her in the backyard and tells no one. Any of us ever accidentally shoot their spouse? Any of us know what you like to be a young girl in that situation? Panic, stressed out, react. And you know how we react? I want you to walk to those shoes. And was there shovels in the backyard? Yes. Did she go to Lowe's at some ridiculous effort to try to bury her? When you see this grave, or however you articulate it, you will know. All it was was panic. It was panic by someone who just didn't know what to do. And she told the police about her trips, and she told the police about her, her panic. And they asked her, why did you call the police? And she says, to be honest with you, I was scared. And she was scared. And here she is. Just a few snippets as to how her words were taken out of context. Not only on August 6, 2016, sorry, 17, but apparently the state feels the need to continue it through January the 23rd, 2020. Now, at the end of this case, I will be addressing with you the evidence. The real, objective, physical evidence in this case. What you see in front of you are some photographs that were taken that day. Just a small sampling of photographs. And at the end of the case, you will realize that these photographs will be a guide for you to be able to independently assess, assess, I'm sorry, assess the facts in this case, the objective facts in this case. Because we're not just asking you to find Laura not guilty of murder because she's in fact not guilty of murder or to just take our word for it. We're going to be asking you to find her not guilty of murder. Because the objective facts, the facts that you can touch, the facts that you can see, the facts that you can hear about, will show you the doubt, the real doubt in this case, that she can At the end of the case, I'll review all of these photographs with you and show you their meaning and your significance. The statement of war, Lucine, is going to be played for you by the state of Maryland. Pay attention to how she talks, her demeanor. You know, when she was arrested, she had a backpack in the back of the key. It didn't have one prescription bottle. It didn't have two prescription bottles, or three, or four, or five. It had nine prescription bottles of medication that were prescribed to her and that she regularly took on a daily basis, coupled with the marijuana she smoked. Just keep that in mind when you hear her statement and how she talks. So, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to let the state show you their so called case. Felicia is no longer with us, and it's, it's heartbreaking. 
expand its heart beating. And you are known to her loss every day. Simply because Felicia is deceased. That's not your function here today. Your function is not to determine whether or not somebody's dead. Your function is to make an assessment as to whether or not they have proven to you beyond a reasonable doubt that she can remember. And there's one huge fact. There's a lot of facts. But there's one huge fact that will come out through the course of my cross-examination of their witnesses. That I suggest to you that perhaps you will have that aha moment that they have not been in front of you during their opening statement about all the facts and all the circumstances that exist in this case. And that they were not there on August 6, 2017. And when she told the police that she accidentally shot Felicia, they have no concrete physical evidence to the contrary. None. I just want to thank you, Mr. Martin. Just going to ask you to just lower that so I can address the jury. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've heard the uh, summation, uh, the uh, opening statements at this point in time. Yeah, the sidebar. Sidebar. Excuse me.